working. Today is a little bit different. Today I'm not going to be working on a car. Instead, I'm actually going to be setting up a camera system that will allow me to run a camera sort of straight down the middle of the garage. And in doing that, I'll also be able to then telescope down and bring it out. The goal is to have a camera that will come out to about the midway point on either side of the garage just on a gimbal from anywhere from here to about here uh, below the car so I can get good camera angles. It's been something I've been frustrated with. The, the tripod has definitely been helpful over the last year, much better than what I had originally which was just me setting my camera on other things. So I'm trying to do this on the cheap because I'm cheap. Um, some things that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some previously made shelves and everything like that and I'm going to use those to my benefit to create these shelvings. So the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use some half inch conduit. I'm gonna run it down the length of my garage and then I'm gonna use some PVC to sort of act as the runner that slides back and forth down it. And then I'm going to make a mount that then slides and has several different articulating arms to create this piece. Again, uh, right now for the proof of concept, I've got about $30 total into purchases. Uh, this conduit is actually fairly cheap and let's see how it goes. So first things first, I'm going to make the conduit the length of the garage. So that's got to be at least 18 feet to get from here back to where my garage door closes. Again, all of this needs to be able to work with the garage door open or closed and not get in the way and I'm not supposed to hit my head on it. That's sort of the goal. So keep watching. First things first, I'm going to put the two pieces of conduit together. All right, so bringing the first piece of the conduit together, I'm actually going to take this conduit joiner, I'm a welder, and see if I can quickly tack weld it to each other. So what I'm having to do is take this reducer and cut out the flange piece that was on the inside here and then sand down these two pieces here so then I could slide easily over. I also then sanded these down so that way there's a smoother transition so the camera doesn't have a tendency to, to catch as we're going over that transition. And then I also sort of added a little bit of a bevel to each of the inside lips here so that way it, again, a less likelihood that it'll catch as it slides along the track. Again, I don't want it to just flop around on the track, but I do want it to slide freely, and I feel like this is going to do that. Now what I need to do is connect the other side to it. So I went back to Home Depot, grabbed a couple more um, conduits. However, this one are the three and a quarter because they're going to be spanning here and they're going to be carrying the weight of the track as well. So 
wanted to get a little bit thicker. So again, we're gonna weld these together. We're gonna put some mounting brackets up along the garage door, and then we'll be ready to sort of put up the whole entire track the lengthwise. So keep watching. Hope you like what you see so far. All right, that's that part of the uh, project done. Now I have to make the mounting tabs for the garage door, like on the garage door side. So I took these, I'm gonna take these four inch blanks and I'm going to drill holes in it for the conduit as well as drill holes in it for the mounting. Youch. So I've got the two plates uh, that I'll go ahead and weld the bar onto whenever I get it mounted up there. But first I'm going to actually um, drill the holes here for the mounting uh, spots, which I'm gonna measure up there. And then I will um, come back out here, drill the holes for it and go from there. out of the four nylon. Right, so I'm gonna end up using some extra screws that I have. These I have um, four, and I've actually got three out of the four nylon nuts, so that's good for that. All right, so now that I've got the mounts done, I'll go ahead and, and hang the conduit up into place. Now, one thing here, I'm gonna end up having to cut a little bit off before I even try to hang it up. That way I can um, sort of lift it up and put it in its spot. Um, somewhat more easily than having this 20 foot long sort of conduit that's going to be hard to put into place. So um, here we go. All right, so doing a little bit of measuring, I'm going to go ahead and cut off about two and a half feet. That'll bring this overall length down to about 17 and a half feet. The distance between the two garage doors um, on the outer ends is right around 17 feet. That'll give me about a half a foot of overlap so that way I can make for sure that it's long enough. All right, now that I've got it hung, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the bolts that are holding it in place along the sides. And then I will do a couple test open and closes of the garage door to see how it works. Crazy. All right, so now I've got this beam up. As you see, it's fairly floppy. I'm not loving that, but we'll see how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and run the two poles, and set them here just to see how much of a droop we have. It's a little bit lower than I wanted it to be so far. I'm gonna probably put another extra 
10 pounds of weight, which is sort of about like that. I think that's not going to be terrible. I think that's actually going to work pretty well. Um, all right. Well, that could have been, that could be worse. So I think the next part is actually going ahead and making the slide tray that goes for the different um, the the track. All right, welcome back. I had to run and grab a new drill bit for the piece, but as you can see, uh, this is what it's gonna happen, what it's gonna do. So this piece is gonna sit on here, and so it'll slide right in, and I can actually pull it out and probably make it a little bit um, tighter, but I've gotta also remove the inner piece of this as well. But proof of concept, that works. All right, so I did a little work off camera, just uh, fiddling with a few things, but I've got the track up. I've actually got the uh, piece sliding uh, back and forth. There was, er, there was a little bit still, a little bit too much friction in these coupler parts. So I sanded on those a little bit, as well as filed down on the inside of the slider PVC. I have to go ahead and weld the last few pieces, which will hold the actual slider piece in its place. So that is going to be really handy because then I won't have to worry about it um, messing up the whole entire thing and I'll be able to slide the pieces back and I'll be able to shut the garage door and it shouldn't interfere. That's the goal at least. But first, I'm gonna, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this coupler and I'm actually going to cut it into a couple different pieces so that way this will actually slide through the coupler uh, but it'll still have the set screw that'll lock it in place. I'll have that lock in place and I'll have this also um, lock in place. That's uh, sort of what we're working on. Uh, the reason I still have length going both back and forth that is extra is my I envision this also being able to go out on the other side and then use that as an articulating mount if and when I decide to do a little bit of work outside the garage, I'll have that capability to move the camera around outside and work uh, at that table there whenever I'm doing stuff that I don't want to have in the garage. But uh, so far, I actually think it's coming along pretty well. Again, it's it's not the most sturdy thing in the world. I wouldn't hang anything from it, uh, but I think with the arm and everything on it, I think it should still be fine. And I think it'll articulate really well. So uh, let's get back to work. As always, remember wear safety gear.
toe seat. Now I can slip these pieces on over. I'm the truth. Plenty of space. So, now I've got the track done, I need to go ahead and build the articulating mount. I'm going to do that by using some just normal common wood. I'm going to go with a 2 to a 1. And it's actually going to go, try to go almost to the floor level if I want to go straight down, and then I'll be able to go over. Here we go.
All right, so moving on to the next portion of the video, I need to attach the final gimbal pieces so that way I can articulate my camera uh, up and down, left and right. All right, so every once in a while you try to do a project and you think it's gonna work out well and it just doesn't end up working the way you want it to. Uh, the flimsiness uh, here in the middle, I didn't mind it going downward, but the ability to move left and right was really cornerstone to what I wanted this project to do. Uh, however, it was unable to do that just based on the bends that would be induced by the conduits as you put pressure on them. Uh, if you look at the end here, they don't have nearly the amount of sway that they do uh, here in the middle. And so it's actually fairly useful right here. I'm actually able to, right, extend down, extend over, and then say if I was even working on a car here, I could bring it down and I could tilt it to show just the different portions of the, um, of the car. And so, of course, I have to actually tighten the stuff uh, so it works. Uh, just to sort of show how I envisioned it would work, um, I'll go ahead and run you through a th few scenarios. So this is what I envisioned it would be able to do, and I was actually really happy with the way that it turned out. But the only problem is, is I can only do it right here. So what does that mean? It means that I've got to figure out a way to do this better. Uh, there's a couple ways that I'm thinking about doing this. Uh, the main way that I'm planning on is probably just re-engineering it to have two fixed mounts. One right here, so I can do the front of the cars, and then maybe another one right here in the middle of the garage that's mounted all the way up to the ceiling and can work off of that. So we'll see how that goes. I've got to do a little bit of uh, looking to see whether or not I can or can't get it mounted that way. I, th I think I'll be able to, honestly. Uh, but um, now I'm actually gonna take the camera out of the old one and or I'm gonna take the camera out of this mount and I'm gonna put in the other one. We'll show you sort of what we can do here. So if this were to work perfectly, this would actually be the camera at the furthest extent of where this uh, scaffolding or mount could carry it. As you see, I can get clear to the other side of a car and still be able to walk around here and get stuff done. Now. Uh, this is it uh, where I can sort of face it on the car. If you look, I can then articulate it around like so, which then allows me to bring it down and have it right over an engine bay. Now, obviously I probably wouldn't um, go with an engine bay straight this way. Uh, I would probably still turn it again to the side so there's some work to do on how I would get that done. But again, this is at full tilt. All right, so this is out at full extension, but with a right angle. So as you see, it gives me the opportunity to, again, if I'm working here on the car, I can keep it out of the way. But if I've got maybe a workbench, so as I'm taking things off of the car, I can then put them on a workbench. And so it can give me that opportunity to go back and forth. Now. Uh, something that we haven't really been able to do much here is maybe do the high shots back down. So let's go ahead and move the camera around to sort of show you what a high above looking down shot would look like. The ceiling shot is definitely something that I haven't been able to do before. So this again gives you a much higher view, uh, allows the camera to be up out of the way, 
but allows me to work on maybe a larger amount of items here on the floor and then use my time-lapse capabilities with a much higher resolution to zoom in on the work and move around and sort of keep the camera up out of the way but still gathering all of the different work that I'm doing. Again, this is the range of motion that I could have. So now, if I wanted to, I can bring it around. This is all live, right? So I'm not cut and cut this, but uh, right down um, the, the center lane. And again, I've got this capability to go ahead and actually videotape or film uh, the things that I'm doing right here. Gives you the high up view. Now, one of the things that I really designed this mount for that I wanted to test out, again, trying to be careful I don't break my camera because it's not the case. But if you look, I've got it low enough where, let's go ahead and rotate myself. Okay. I will then swing the camera out just a bit, rotate myself like so, and then I am actually able to look underneath the car. So I can actually go out as far as the center line of an engine. So again, you got to remove the wobble from it. Once you remove the wobble, I now have the capability to actually do shots from underneath the engine. So I think that's really cool. Again, I think there's a lot of really good things about this mount. However, just the center points, not being able to actually, um, actually lock in is just something that um, make, means that I can't use um, the pieces, which makes me sad in the long run, but something that I think I can overcome with a couple fixed mounts along the path and then a storage capability here. Again, that's the camera underneath the car capability to do that. And we're at about 15 minutes of filming, which I'll cut down hopefully for your sake. But So if you're looking to build one of these, um, I, I'm going to suggest if you want to do it on the cheap, instead of doing this, just buy one set of conduit, maybe a 10 foot chunk, um, a couple of those couplers, uh, the pieces to make the articulating arm, and then just choose spots and use lag bolts to drill in, in the ceiling, which is what I'm going to do in the next part of the video to see whether it works as a center mount point here in the middle of the garage, which will allow me to again sort of move it up out of the way but also reach the stuff sort of on the second half of the garage. Like I said, I, I really like the way that it turned out and I think it'll be really helpful for me as I do more time lapses in the future. But the wobble that it's got right now, I just don't think it's um, gonna work uh, whenever I put it out in the middle of the garage. All right, so I took down the mount. As you saw, it wasn't actually very hard to take down, which was good. That was one of the uh, goals, is to have a system that worked well and could be removed if necessary and leave no uh, damage to my um, garage. So that was good. Um, however, now what I'm gonna do is build the permanent mounts for um, the front here, and then as well as look at seeing whether I can mount something here on the garage door motor mount. So. Uh, here we go.
So about one hour and a bit of conduit. And I've got a mount in the middle of the garage now that'll also accept this. Uh, this is where I'm planning on keeping it for a little bit. I'll maybe look at doing that one for now. I think the way I work, I'm actually able to mount it here and actually keep a pretty good um, view of the most of the garage just right here on this one singular spot. I use these uh, couplers which right here to ensure that I was actually able to remove this if necessary. Uh, but I've got this capability to now go um, both uh, left and right, swing it around. Uh, if I were going to do it again, and I still can, I'd probably make this a little bit shorter just so it doesn't have as much wobble in it. Um, and I would maybe reinforce that upper plate uh, just with an additional plate sort of uh, running the length of it to sort of keep the waviness out of it. Uh, but for now, as a proof of concept, uh, we'll see how it works. But uh, now I'm going to sort of take you on a tour on this one. Right, so this is probably one of the most versatile shots. I've got the camera at full extension uh, away from the mount. I do have it running parallel with the mounts, so that way there's less twist. Uh, but this gives me full range of the garage and also allows me to not have to worry about running into a camera or moving it around. Since I have a wide field of view with the GoPro, I'm able to actually keep everything in focus. Then again, whenever I'm using my time lapses at 4,000 by 3,000 pixels, I'm actually able to zoom in to the different areas where I'm working. So again, uh, this is just one way. Uh, the next shot I'm going to switch to is showing sort of under the car midway. Here we have the camera underneath the car again. Um, sort of showing a transmission shot while I'm maybe working on bringing in the transmission and then uh, sort of live if I wanted to take it outside I could bring it around and then I could go up I wanted to show this one shot just to show although my hood is super dirty um, that I could be working on things like the carburetor and still have the camera mounted clear over in the middle of the room but able to take the photos and video that I need uh, just because of the articulating arm. Uh, some things that I'm seeing is because my mount isn't as true as it should be, um, it likes to rotate uh, easier one way than another. Um, and there is some wobble in it just based on the solidness of the mount. But I don't know, we'll try it out for the next couple of videos and see how she works. Thanks for watching.